Hello, friends, and welcome to Jewels of Truth. My name is Daniel Fontenot, and today we will be discussing the power of the papacy versus the power of the gospel. Well, I thought the papacy preached the gospel, so how could they be at variance with one another? The power of the papacy versus the power of the gospel. This is an article by A.T. Jones in the periodical entitled The American Sentinel, uh, May 17, 1894. You know, I read a lot of these articles here on this channel, and, uh, you know, some of them uh, are, they, they don't apply to us in these last days, but I believe most of them do. The same controversies are raging today as, as were in the 1800s. So, in the American Sentinel, Brother A.T. Jones has these things to say. The American Sentinel is Christian, Protestant, American. The American Sentinel is therefore uncompromisingly and everlastingly opposed to every element of the papacy from beginning to end. And I will have to say that the jewels of truth feels the same way. We are uncompromisingly and everlastingly opposed to every element of the papacy from beginning to end and so should you have that attitude. However, from a survey of all the field of the operation of the papacy, which is only political and worldly, we have found, and our readers must have seen, what an immense disadvantage it is under which any form of opposition must be carried on which is in any way political or according to worldly methods. Today, every conceivable political or worldly advantage is with the papacy. And dear friends, if you don't believe that, you need to dig into the history of the papacy, not only in the Dark Ages, but also in the, in, in, in the past more than 100 years. Okay, so entirely is this so that those very provisions of the United States Constitution, which were intended to be an everlasting barrier against any encroachment of religion upon the government and against any recognition of any religion by the government, these very provisions are now taken advantage of by the papacy to crowd herself upon the government and to take possession of it by her, uh, with, for her own purposes. The Constitution of the United States declares that, quote, no religious test shall ever be required as a qualification for any office or position of trust under the government, unquote. The papacy takes advantage of this to get her agents into every office or position of trust that is possible, and then uses all the opportunities of that office or position to favor the papacy and to give her fuller hold upon the government. And that is why Catholicism permeates society and the governments of this world because they have taken advantage of that amendment to the Constitution that no religious test shall ever be required as a qualification for any office or, or position of trust under the government. And so, you know, we have to allow Catholics, if they want to run for public office, we have to allow them to, to, to run for office. And just as soon as any exposure of it is made, she raises the cry of persecution and of bringing religion into politics. And as certainly as any opposition is attempted, 
she denounces it as a violation of the Constitution by making a religious test a qualification for office. See, and I can imagine this probably went on during the time that uh, John F. Kennedy was running for president. You know, the people of this country had a hard time accepting uh, and believing that a Catholic could be president of the United States, and justly so. Justly so, because at least people back in the 19, late 1950s, early 60s, you know, they still had a remembrance from their preachers, you know, and studying history about the Catholic Church's persecution of Protestants during the Dark Ages. Again, the Constitution says that, quote, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion are prohibiting the free exercise thereof, unquote. The papacy takes advantage of this also to do whatever she pleases to crowd herself upon the government in every way, po in every possible way, knowing that she can never be interfered with because Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. And when any attempt is made on the part of anybody to interfere with her schemes, she cries out, or she raises the cry of violation of the Constitution and attacking religious liberty. You even have people today that are defending the papacy and defending their religious liberty. Thus, the very provisions of the Constitution which were intended to protect the country and people from the domination of religion in Rome are made the shelter under which Rome and her religion shall be made to dominate the country and people. It, this is so sad. But it was inevitable. It was ine inevitable. You can't change the Constitution to prohibit that. I wouldn't suggest that. We're just saying that the papacy and the Catholic Church, the hi Catholic hierarchy, they take advantage of our Constitution in a bad way. This is the grand discovery that Leo XIII has made with reference to the Constitution of the United States. And this is one grand reason why Leo commands all Catholics in the United States to bear in one hand the Catholic Bible and in the other the Constitution of the United States as they quote-unquote go forward on their great mission to bring their country into immediate contact with that great secret of blessedness, the Church of Rome. This is why Leo has such great love for the American Constitution. It prohibits any political or governmental interference with his mischievous and unconstitutional schemes. And professed Protestants have set the example of these encroachments of religion and the church upon the government and have actually joined hands with the papacy in the accomplishment of some of them. Having thus betrayed the government to the papacy, they have robbed themselves of all power of protest and have greatly increased the already great advantage of the papacy. You know, and that's the way it goes. You know, you have, even in individuals, you know, you have one person, he is, he is evil, and the other person, okay, he's not as evil, but then he starts doing the things that the evil person does. Well, then, okay, he's taken away from himself every argument against the evil one, the most evil one. The secret of this great advantage that the papacy holds is that secular power, okay, the secret of this great advantage that the papacy holds is that peculiar policy by which she can so fully and constantly cause craft to prosper in her hand. And Brother Jones here is quoting from Daniel chapter 8. 
See, she is such a perfect mistress of every kind of deceitful invention that there is no kind of human working that can successfully contend with her. To attempt to oppose her by any kind of crafty method is not only to be so far just like her, but at the last to find yourself so far outdone in craftiness as to be made ashamed that you ever tried it. To attempt opposition to her now by any political or governmental method, even though it be right, is to find yourself at such an immense disadvantage as to make all such effort practically useless. And what is the use of putting forth strenuous efforts when every evidence demonstrates that they are only in vain? It is only exhausting yourself for nothing. So, we are brought again to the question, what shall be done? Shall we still, uh, shall we sit still and do nothing? No, no. We are to be more active and to do more than ever before. How then shall it be done? There is one way to do it and only one. That is with the word of God, the everlasting gospel. This method gives to him who employs it every advantage of, of position and of power over the papacy and all her workings. It gives every advantage in position because the papacy knows nothing of the gospel. And in contending with him who uses that method only, she is all at sea. It gives every advantage in power because the gospel itself is the power of God. And in contending with him who depends upon the power of God and is allied to it only, the papacy is impotent. This is the true Christian way. This is the true Protestant way to oppose the papacy. And in this way, there is no such thing as defeat or failure. For what seems to be failure is victory, and what appears to be defeat is triumph. This has been clearly and abundantly proved in history. This is true of the time of Luther and of the rise of Protestantism. So long as Protestants held faithfully to the gospel alone and depended only upon its power, the papacy, which then possessed all the power of Europe, was powerless before them. Martin Luther, the chief and leader of the opposition to the papacy in that day, was personally attacked with all the power, cunning, and craft of the papacy. By the published decree of the emperor in behalf of holy church, quote-unquote holy church, he was outlawed in all Europe, and everybody was commanded under penalty of treason to take him and deliver him up and receive the reward due to so good a work. Yet for all this, the papacy was unable ever to lay a hand on him or do him harm, and he died at last, peaceably, and in his bed, an everlasting victor over all the power of the papacy. And, living and dying, a proof to all the world of what a man can do in opposition to the papacy who depends upon the gospel alone and allied to the power of God only. And so long as Protestantism was faithful to its allegiance to the gospel and the power of God only, so long, as, so long the tide of the Reformation swept irresistibly onward. But the moment this allegiance was slackened, this tide was checked. And as this allegiance was lessened, the tide was reversed. And now that this allegiance of professed Protestantism has wholly ceased and papal principles and methods only are recognized or employed, the papacy once more overflows and possesses all the power of earth. But the gospel has not ceased. 
The word of God is not bound. The power of God is not slack toward those who believe. The everlasting gospel abides and is to be preached with the attendance of the power of God in such measure as the world has never seen and which is to accomplish indeed what Luther longed to see, the complete overthrow and engulfing of the papacy and all her abominations. This is the way and the only way of assured and complete success in opposing the papacy of today. This is the way that the American sentinel takes and which it is going to follow to the end. This is the way of true Christianity. This is the way of true Protestantism. And we want everybody to go this way. Come with us and we will do thee good. For God has promised victory over the beast and over his image and a song of triumph to all who take this way. A.T. Jones, The American Sentinel, May 17, 1894. We thank you for joining us here at Jewels of Truth. We thank you for listening to this reading of, of A.T. Jones's article in The American Sentinel. If you appreciate this type of content, we would highly recommend that you tap that like button so that it can be sent far and wide to those who are hungering for truth in these last days of Earth's history. And if you have any questions, we welcome you to uh, place them on the bottom the, of this video. Or if you have any comments, and if you haven't subscribed, we would highly encourage you to do that also. Thank you for joining us here at Jewels of Truth. May you have a good day in the Lord.